news item from Variety. Uh, Amazon Fallout to film second season in California with $25 million tax credit. Um, why am I not scrolling? Here we go. Scroll, scroll. All right, Fallout, the post-apocalyptic series debuting on uh, this week on Amazon Prime, is expected to relocate to California for its second season thanks to a $25 million uh, California tax credit. Uh, the California Film Commission announced Monday that it has awarded $150 million in tax incentives to a dozen shows, including Ryan Murphy, uh, two shows from Ryan Murphy, Dr. Odyssey and a Grotesquerie. Um, NCIS Origins, because of course we needed another NCIS show because it makes right. There's only ten right now. We need more. I know, but people watch them. That's the crazy thing. <laughs> uh, Fallout has the largest budget of any of the shows at 150 million in qualified expenditures for the season. The first season was produced mostly in New York and with some filming in Utah. Now, the reason I bring this uh, article up is uh, if I scroll down here. Um, let me see. Yeah, so studios apply for California credits during multiple funding rounds each year, and credits are awarded based on the potential job creation. Fallout comes from Jonathan Nolan and Lisa Joy, the creators of Westworld, is based on the popular video game franchise. Even when a show has been allocated tax credits to move to California, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that does not guarantee that it will actually do so. Uh, a year ago, uh, Amazon was awarded $25 million to relocate the second season of Citadel to California. However, uh, however, the, the show was later withdrawn from programming, and the money has been put back into the general pool. Uh, yeah, and uh, oh, yeah, and it's reported that the show will be filming in the second season uh, in September in Toronto. So I, I just find it interesting, A, that, uh, that California is desperate, and B... Um, you know, even though it's been awarded this money, uh, I don't think they've officially announced yet that they are moving to California. And that uh, it basically says, I think I read it before, is expected to relocate to California. Um, I mean, Dante, what do you think? First of all, I think, okay, I think, number one, that that number's too low for, for mm -hmm. a tax credit um, for the film industry anyway. My, my problem is they should have been doing this a long time ago, man. Like Hollywood, California, this is our product here. This is our product. Why have there not been more incentives given for studios to shoot here where our main product is film? Right? Yeah. Like they should have been doing this a long time ago. And they're doing it now because they're desperate. But you know, what about all the all the studios that have left? All the filming that's done in other places while those states or those countries reap the benefits, right? Yeah. I mean, we've been talking a lot about it, but but Hollywood is dying. Um, you know, I, I think that... Oh, it's, it's dying a fast death, not not a slow one. Yeah. Yeah, and especially, I mean, you, you had the pandemic, which killed killed much of the industry. Then you had these strikes that killed the industry. These these strikes uh, shut production down, uh, canceled contracts, uh, reduced the number of projects being uh, put in development, and they are going elsewhere. Uh, the pandemic, the strikes... Showed that you know it's best to go overseas, uh, best yeah. to go to Canada, best to go to England, uh, you know. And you know, I think Fallout. The only thing going for Fallout is that at least California has locations that match the location of Fallout. Um, you know, it, it, I you know I think we talked before that. Oh, I talked to a friend of mine who who basically says uh, Hollywood. The only industry running entertainment industry running in Hollywood right now uh, are agents and lawyers. Uh, yeah, you know, pretty much. You, you go to Hollywood, you know, there's there's nothing going on there. Uh, businesses are shutting down. Um, I was amazed to find at least one restaurant that was busy, but it was surrounded by a lot of businesses, restaurants that are closed. Uh, it, yeah, it just saddens me uh, that you know this is this is the land of movies. This is where movies were born. When and, I, uh, and I think I, I think a lot of people don't understand how vital the film industry is to California, especially to L.A., right? Because it's like you said, it's not just the movies themselves, but it's what they affect. They affect the, the restaurants around them. They affect the bars around them. They affect, you know, because people go to these places to eat, drink, and while work in the industry. But if these people are working in other places because California refused to give these studios some kind of break, then, yeah, we're going to lose a lot more than just movies. Yeah. Yeah. 
Can I blame our governor? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I blame him every day. <laughs> I know. Uh, Screw that guy. I mean, it, it's like he was he was he was at the uh, press conference for Disneyland uh, as they're about to expand, and I'm like, he's not. He doesn't care about Disneyland. He cares about getting votes and and being seen. And, yeah. And uh, you know that's where he's at now. Okay, one more story. I, I thought this was interesting, and then we'll get to the movies. Uh, this is from Hollywood Reporter. Uh, get this. Okay, so I, we, look, it wouldn't be a week if we didn't troll Disney, and here's uh, this week's <laughs> Disney trolling. Um, Disney publicist Marshall Weinbaum departs for Netflix award team. Uh, this is an exclusive. Uh, Weinbaum, who was voted publicist of the year by the ICG Publicist Guild in 2022, Spent 17 years at the Mouse House and will now work on awards campaigns for animated films under Julie Tustin. Why am I bringing this up? Uh, again, let's um, let's see. Uh, so, uh, an Marshall Weinbaum, an admired publicist who has been principal intermediary between the Walt Disney Studios and press for the past 17 years, uh, including on virtually every Disney animation and Pixar project is leaving the mouse house to join Netflix award team. Um, here we go. He will be manager of awards, awards uh, animation under veteran Julie Tustin on awards campaigns for the streamers animated films, which has increasingly factored into the Oscar race. Indeed, over the past five years, Netflix has landed seven best animated feature Oscar nominations, uh, at least one every year, winning uh, for Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, and two of the best animated shorts, uh, you know, if anything happens, and I love you. Um, let's see. Uh, I want to get to the big part here. Uh, oh, yeah. So last paragraph here. I've loved my time at Disney over the past 17 years, Weinbaum tells uh, The Hollywood Reporter. And I'm really excited about this new opportunity at Netflix. I've always loved animation and awards. So this is where a dream come true. I, I bring this up because that, that thing. That he loves part. animation, so he's leaving animation. Disney. He left Disney <laughs> to Netflix because he loves animation. Wow. Wow, man. <laughs> How far the mouse has fallen. Oh, I mean, this is this is the most ironic thing you can say. Look, um, uh, it surprises me. This past year, Wish, uh, you know, all the... Walt Disney animation uh, film animated films that were musicals at least had one song nominated as best picture. Uh, Wish uh, it was the first film in a very long time where Disney didn't at least get an Oscar nomination for a song. Wow, uh, that's how bad it is. And for him to leave Disney, you know, who started uh, it's uh, who started doing animation shorts a hundred years ago, uh, started with Snow White, has this long tradition of animation. And for him to say, I always loved animation. This this is a dream come true. Dude, that dream says a lot, true. man. Like that is that's the final nail, dude. Like it was funny is I I'm fine. I haven't seen the movie, but it mm -hmm. seems like Wish is the movie that has broken so many like Disney files, right? <laughs> like yeah. like it seems like that one movie is it was mm -hmm. it for everybody. Like I'm done yeah. with Disney animation. Yeah, I haven't was, seen it. I haven't seen it. Is it that bad? It is. It is that bad. When you watch Wish, it, here, here's what I would say for those of you curious and has have Disney Plus. I would wait a month from now so that the the number totals for Wish is not necessarily impacted, and then go watch Wish because your uh you know your your view there is not going to count for much. Um, <laughs> but but it is fundamentally the worst animated feature uh, I've seen uh, in a long time. It's the worst from Walt Disney Company, uh, definitely. Wow. And and if you watch the D files, the the story is this: uh, they got rid of everyone who had ever who who had some connection with Walt Disney. That legacy, that legacy they built from the Disney Renaissance, starting with Little Mermaid. Everyone there who knew, who touched, who understood Disney animation, they're gone. And so Wish comes along. It's the 100th anniversary. They go through all this trouble of saying, hey, let's study Walt's movies of the past and let's replicate that in Wish. Uh, and what, what you realize is that the people who could actually tell them what Walt's legacy was, was gone. And that they had to go back and deconstruct everything and then put together Wish. 
and there was no one there who told him what to do. In fact, uh, in the D files, we talk about that, that there were those there who knew. And whenever they brought up suggestions or brought up criticisms, um, they, uh, they got immediately shut down and, uh, sorry, we got to run that one there. And, uh, so there you go. This is our, our weekly troll of the Walt Disney company. Well, I mean, and the thing is, is once, once you break, you, you, you've killed all those connections. Mm -hmm. Is it even Disney anymore? Yep. Right. Yeah. Like, like it, you could say the same thing about, you know, a lot of you guys know that I'm, I'm a big gamer, you know, the company Bioware, right? When EA gutted that whole team that the original team that gave us the original mass effect that gave us Knights of the Old Republic once you gut that whole team is it even the same company anymore no because they, they produce nothing but garbage ever since they cut that team out so same thing with Disney man if you're getting rid of everybody related that was related to Walt Disney in some way or another it's not the same company it's a different company mm -hmm. no, absolutely uh, I mean th this happens a lot I, I look I, I'd been a diehard Dodger fan for forever and uh, it was when the O'Malley sold the team that it was like, okay, I'm done with the Dodgers because it's no longer a family team. It's a it's a corporate team, and you you look at baseball now, it's it's corporate. Oh yeah, um, all of it. And then when Bungie uh, was no longer working on on Halo, it was like, okay, I, I'm done with Halo now. Right, and, and, and it baffles me because the thing that made you a success is the thing you decide to cut, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> same thing yeah. with disney the thing that made them was animation mm -hmm. it made them like disney would be nothing without animation and, yeah. and this is the thing that they choose to neglect and cut